I'm just a woman staring at a sour cream salad, asking it to be done already. <laughs> like you're not gonna assemble your sauce? delicious side dishes for you that you are going to be serving all summer long alongside your meals. We have my buttery grilled corn ribs, a salsa verde guacamole that you will not want to share with anybody, and also my grandma's sour cream salad. I feel like when I am cooking in the summer, I am doing things so simply and I'm almost always grilling, and then I forget what to serve as a side dish. I'm like, I have grilled chicken, I have burgers, no sides. These sides are solving that issue for me. They are gonna be on repeat all season long to go with my delicious summer meals. First up are my buttery grilled corn ribs. This is the shape of a corn rib. These went viral, I think it was last summer. And I remember being like, that seems like too much work to get corn into my mouth. And then I decided to try it. And I'm a believer, this is the only way I will grill corn now. I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to get your corn into these cute little corn ribs and how to grill them. Here's a few things to know up front. You do need to be working with a sharp knife. So. Get your knife sharpened. Always, always, always have your hands, your fingies out of the way of the blade. And if at any point you do not feel safe, don't do it. There are a few ways to do this. I think Jeremy actually hacked the correct way to do it. The most safe way, I should say. The first thing you're gonna do is get rid of both ends. So you just put your knife there. And I kind of like to roll the corn. Again, you saw that my hands were nowhere near the blade. And now we are going to cut through the middle again. And really cutting this way through the corn is the toughest part, which is why I like to use the rolling motion. Or if you want to, you can also just whichever, whichever way you want. Now we need to get these into four pieces each to have eight corn ribs. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stand it up, make sure it's on a flat surface. It can be stood up appropriately. I'm gonna go just halfway through. And cutting through this way through the cob actually is easier. So we'll just go halfway. And again, I kind of use a rocking motion. So see, I didn't even really go halfway. I just got my knife in there. Once you do that, you want to remove gently the corn. Turn it and go the other way, down the corn, all the way through. Again, you can rock or <coughs> boom, corn. Now, because we already made a slit through the top, it'll be easier to get our knife down there. So you find your slit by looking at the cob. That's probably the easiest way. So I just went right down in there. And then same. <coughs> Corn rips. Okay, you're gonna find your slit on here again. See the slit is right there. So I'm gonna get my knife back in there. And it slides right in. Corn rips. And we do it with the next one. I like to rock the knife in there and then just bang a little bit to get the knife wedged in there. Then pull the knife up. Again, notice my fingers are never under the blade. That's very important. Also, I'm just gonna clean up my board so that I really am working on a flat surface. There's my slit. I'm gonna go down the other way, all the way. Once it's leveraged in there, all the way down. I, I appreciate your banging method. I'm more of a purist. What does that mean? I think you should just cut it without banging it, personally. I can't do it without banging. I'm gonna find where I had my slit in here. There it is. Corn ribs. Babe, you love these. I do. They're and you great. didn't think you were they're gonna so like They're so easy to eat. No, I thought that they were really dumb at first because I thought it was too hard to make them. And then I found an easier way to make them. You did, you hacked this. Going through it vertically is way better. Stay mm. safe out there. Tuck the fingies. Protect the fingies. Down the middle. These are also perfect as like a pickup appetizer. You'll see when we eat them. They're so easy to just pick up and eat if you're at a party. Instead of like gnawing on a whole corn of cob. It's less messy. Better for the teeth too. Better for the teeth. You don't get stuff tuck, stuck in your teeth this way. Oh yeah, that's true. Like this is a cob friendly approach. Cob friendly. It sounds like I'm saying carb like as a New Yorker. Cob friendly. <laughs> yeah, maybe someone from Boston. Oh, Boston. I never know my accents right. I love cobs. 
These are our corn ribs. You can even prep these the morning of a barbecue or your gathering and just leave them as is, cover them. Don't have to dress them or anything. And then when you're ready to grill them, you can pull them out. I add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of olive oil. And then I like to season my corn ribs. I do all kinds of seasonings. Right now I have this citrusy garlic blend from Trader Joe's, so I'm gonna use that. I've done lemon pepper seasoning. I've done a Greek seasoning. Just any seasoning blend that's calling to you. We are gonna give these corn ribs the massage of their lifetime because I really wanna work that seasoning in. And I'm telling you, the flavor is next level. You say that's cob loading? And these will take just about five minutes on the grill on medium high, and then that's it. That's your side dish. I just take my corn ribs out to my grill. I've already oiled it. It's on about medium high heat. And then I just use my fingers to put them on the grill. We have our corn ribs, and to add a little flair, I like to drizzle them with a little bit of garlic butter right when they come out of the grill. And then I add just a little bit of fresh salt. And then I toss it to get all that butter and salt on them. I just stack them up on a plate and people can grab them as they see fit. Obviously, I need to taste one now. This little cutie right here. Look how cute! They smell so good, so buttery. Oh my gosh. These are so satisfying. And I don't know what it is about eating them like this. It's so fun. Mmm. This will be on rotation all summer long. Next up for our summer side dish is salsa verde guacamole. You all, I first saw a tub of this at Trader Joe's and it was delicious. And I was like, well, now I need to make it. It's super simple. First, we're gonna start with some tomatillos. I always get about six to seven. I take their little husks off and we're gonna put them under the broiler with our jalapeno. I like to de-seed my jalapeno because I don't like a very spicy salsa verde guacamole, but if you want spice, you can leave the seeds in the whole jalapeno, half the jalapeno, like I might leave these seeds here. And I'm gonna put this under the broiler for about five minutes and then turn everything and let it broil for another five minutes. We have our jalapenos and our tomatillos that just came out from under the broiler. They got nice and browned. This is what we are looking for on both sides. And now we just throw everything in a blender. have half a white onion, roughly chopped. About a heaping fourth cup of fresh cilantro. I measure this with my heart. I really love cilantro, so if you don't love it as much, you can back off on it. Juice of two limes. Three teaspoons of kosher salt. And two avocados. Something I love about this as a summer side dish is, as you know, when you make guacamole, your guacamole, depending on how you're preserving it, can go brown within a few hours or a few days, again, depending on how you are preserving it. This stays green for a week straight. So you can make this ahead of time. You don't have to worry about, oh, is my salsa verde guacamole going to brown? It won't, it won't, I've tested it. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed with these avocados. I just pulled that out. I just pulled that out with my bare hands. It's pretty great. Perfect <laughs> ripeness. Perfect ripeness. I just manhandled this seed. Just boom. Why do we never grow little avocado plants from our avocado pits? Can you do that? Yeah. What, you never did that? That's like the most famous children's science experiment. Is growing avocados with avocado seeds? Where do you put it, in a backyard? No, you on just your put, table? Tooth, you put toothpicks in and then you put it on top of water and then it sprouts. An avocado? Yep. It gives you another avocado? Well, no, it gives you a sprout that grows into a tree that can bear avocados. <laughs> That's it, now we get to blend it and taste to see if we wanna add anything else. Two things to know when you go to blend it, you do wanna have an opening for your lid. Don't we all? Who put this lid back on? Susie, Susie used it last. You do wanna have an opening on your blender because we have hot items in here. The tomatillos and the jalapeno are still very warm, so just make sure you have an opening. You can also do this in your food processor. I'm gonna do it in my Vitamix, and you all, I just turn it onto the smoothie function, and it turns out that the smoothie function does make it a pretty thick dip, but I love that, I love it. Basically what I'm trying to say is blend to your consistency. <laughs> It smells so good, you all, like the most delicious salsa. I don't generally drink green smoothies, but if someone gave this to me, I'd be like, it's for health.
Okay, I'm gonna try it before I dip it out because if I wanna add anything like salt, heat, acid, anything like that, it's still in the blender. That was perfect. You will be munching on this all summer long. I do not even wanna share this with anybody. Hey. I, sorry. I'm gonna take this and I'll be back. And we've made it to our third summer side dish and you all, this is a fan favorite. It is my grandma's sour cream salad. And something you need to know about this is you really do bring this together with your whole heart. You get to choose the salt, you get to choose the pepper, you get to choose how many veggies, how much onion, how much tomato. It is such a cooling, refreshing side dish, especially if you are having something that is grilled. It is the perfect complement. Also, I have been known to just like eat a whole bowl all by myself. It comes together really quickly. I like using these smaller cucumbers. I think they have better flavor. I'm gonna use this beautiful tomato. If you have a ripe heirloom tomato, that would also be really good. And some red onion. I am just gonna make enough for about two people. You really want to make as much as you are going to eat because it is best right when it is made. So here are some tips for if you do want to make this ahead of time. The first is it is best when it is so nice and cold. So put all your veggies in the refrigerator until you're ready to make it. And then when you make it, the veggies will already be cold. It'll be perfect. The second tip, if you're trying to cut down on time, like you just want to be able to pull it out and take it somewhere, is to go ahead and chop all your veggies. This is a tip for my mom. Did you see that one trying to get away? Trying to get away. You can go ahead and chop all of your veggies and put it in the refrigerator, just the veggies. And then when you are ready to assemble the rest of it, basically add the sour cream and the salt, pull it out right before you're gonna serve it and go ahead and add that sour cream and that salt. And that will cut down on some prep time for right before serving it. Oh, gracious honey. <laughs> murder! Violence was done. This, this onion is trying to murder me! Okay, and then I just like to do some very thinly sliced rounds of onions. And now it's trying to murder me in my eyes. Wow. That's about enough onion because I can tell this onion is so pungent. So I have two cucumbers, maybe about like a little bit of an onion. I also like using cherry tomatoes in this if I can't find any delicious looking tomatoes. I'm just gonna kind of do some half moon shapes. You can also remove the seeds from your tomato to cut back on it getting too watery. If you do have leftovers and you put it in the refrigerator, the next day you just might, you'll want to remix and you might just need to add a little bit more sour cream so it's not watery. I'm gonna start with a teaspoon. Um, I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of kosher salt because this is a smaller batch and just some freshly cracked black pepper. And now I'm gonna start with a big dollop of sour cream, maybe a little bit more. Again, this is the only recipe I'll ever give you where I'm like, do you figure that out? But it's like a consistency thing. Like if you love sour cream, maybe you want a lot of sour cream, you know? I'm gonna taste it, see if I need any more salt or pepper. Mmm, mmm. Do not understand why this is so delicious. It is so simple. Like someone come and tell me scientifically how this is so insanely delicious with just a few ingredients. It tastes like you have a garden in your mouth, but in like the best way. And the sour cream just makes it so creamy and cooling. This is definitely sure to be one of your fan favorite summer side dishes. I solved what we are gonna be having for side dishes this summer. You cannot go wrong with any of these. The corn ribs, the sour cream salad, Salad, the salsa verde guacamole, all of these are so delicious on their own, but then obviously you pair it with a meal, serve it as a side dish, and it will make your summer meal absolutely shine. <coughs> hmm. The pollen, the seasoning of the esophagus.